Hi, this is Steve Lentini, and I'm your host for Different Thinking for Different Times. This is Season 2, Episode 3. I have a quote from Ernest Holmes to start off the podcast tonight. Our contention, and I quote, by the way, Ernest Holmes, our contention is not that dead men live again, but that a living man never dies. That was my experience on November 18th, 2002, when in intensive care in my hospital bed, I was one second with two friends visiting me at the end of the bed and the next second in pure consciousness. The stream of life continued, albeit not in a physical form. I was one with everything and nothing, and it was just a knowing. It wasn't even startling to recognize I didn't have a body, but I do remember my my consciousness noting it, but not like I was startled. It was just, okay, I don't have a body. But that part of me remained. I was still in the life stream, just different. And there was a life review and only the lives I had touched was mentioned, only the good I had done. And then I was asked to question, stay or go. And my consciousness responded to that question with, thy will be done. Now, while I was in what I call pure consciousness, I could not string the events together because there was no past and there was no future. There was only the now which taught me that as I got back into my body, because right after I did, my consciousness responded, thy will be done to the question, stay or go, I was right back in the hospital room. Now, that was the fifth day that I was in intensive care, and little did I know that it would take altogether 100 days before I would leave the hospital. I mean, there was a few stays off and on, but I'd go out for a few days and then I'd come back in, but it took 100 days altogether. And in the stream of life, what I learned as I got back in my body, that in pure consciousness, there was only the now. I was able to string it together as I thought about that back in my body, but that where the divine was when I was one with the infinite, one with what made life, what flung the stars into space. There was only the now. And so there were some three distinct life-changing messages and lessons that I got from being on the other side, from where I came and from where we all come and from and to where we all go, return, where we all go back to. What I learned was that good somehow is etched into the fabric of time. I know how I feel when I do good. And when I ask people about that, how do you feel when you do good? They all say, well, I feel good. I feel great. That's part of our job here is to do good. And to surrender to the moment, that was the thing that I did, unlike any other time in my body before that moment when I was asked stay or go, my consciousness totally surrendered to thy will be done. It didn't matter what was next, whether I stayed in pure consciousness or came back to the physical existence. And I came back to the physical existence knowing I have work to do. And part of my work is to let people know we're here to do good. That's why you feel good when you do good. If you do, maybe there's people out there that don't. And the other thing was that there was nothing from here, nothing from the physical world was there, including our small-minded acorn brain, what I call now the acorn brain or even the little fucker that's on our shoulder making us wrong, making others wrong, making judgments. None of that was there. There was no religion. There was no male, no female. There was no opposites. There was no races, no nationalities, no sexes. Nothing from here, what I call the small-minded thinking, the acorn brain. And so 
that too is our job is to be in the moment and to accept it, including everyone that's in it and to overcome all small minded thinking because the mind of God where I was, was infinite. It was amazing. It was way beyond our little brain. <clears throat> and the purpose for our little brain, though, is to we can learn and grow by overcoming it. And most humans, sadly, are asleep. They just believe that little voice. And they live their life being right, making others wrong, making other nationalities and races and religions and even petty political beliefs wrong and fighting and angry and wanting the whole world to think like they do. And that's the thing that we have to overcome and learn to compromise and, and talk with others that communication is a part of relationship. We're not supposed to agree with everybody because that's how we learn and grow. Can you imagine if we did, that would be back in the mind of God. Some people will be upset to hear there's no religions because they think they have the religion. Some people, some people will be upset to learn there are no sexes, that it's all one. No nationalities, that we're all the same. But we've come here with all these differences because I think that the consciousness has a sense of humor, right? That we, if we were all the same, then it would be boring. And so you can see, too, how we struggle and fight and war and ravage one another when we're supposed to just figure out how to get along. And that takes negotiation and compromise and a willingness to see the other's point, to have compassion and empathy, and to truly accept the moment. And that's what I've written about in my book, Wake Up, Jump Into Your Life. And I often have quotes from George Ivanovich Gurdjieff, who was a bit of a, he was a spiritual master, but he was also a bit of a cad. He, he really learned how to live life and to, and to bug people. He had studied many different religions and Sufi masters and uh, whirling dervishes, and he used a combination of uncomfortable movements and music and, and uh, acting to get into people's consciousness. And you don't have to have music or acting or any kind of formal instruction to get into people's consciousness other than teaching people. What I teach people is observe who bugs you because that's, they're a gift. They're here to teach you and reserve what, observe what and who bug you because all of those things are here to teach you, to help you learn and grow. It's not about dying right because you don't die. It's about learning and growing so that in the stream of life for whatever's next. And I don't know for me, I came back to here. That's what was next for me. And because I know it's infinite that there's just a stream of life that's running and who knows what's next for me. Very few people have had a second chance, a chance to come back and tell others that, we live in something amazing, right? We, we don't have to believe the Hubble telescope to know that we live in something amazing. And that's a gift, right, to see those images. We, we, when we see them, we say, wow, that is amazing, right? Something infinite. But I'm here to tell you that my second chance in life, my time on the other side, I'm here to share with you that nothing from here was there. We don't bring that angry, vengeful uh, images that, that are written about even in the Bible. That was human thinking. That's where the divine was overtaken by human thinking. Somebody was mad that day and they were writing about the, the different books and somebody got angry and said, well, God will smite you. It doesn't happen. This is cause and effect. We pay here for our mistakes. You put out negative, you get back negative. You commit a crime, even if you've never caught, you live with it all your life, and you wonder when you'll get caught. I don't have all the answers for the 
murders and the war and the different tragedies, except that it's there for us to learn how to overcome it. That the only way we can overcome it is to begin the dialogue of nonviolence. And, and it's a challenge when you have different societies that want to overcome the other. Right? We have the Chinese that are building a, a military and the Russians that are building a military. And then the Muslim countries that are, want to wipe out the Eastern thinking countries or the Western thinking countries. Anyone who doesn't think like they do. And it's all sad thinking. It's all sad thinking because it's wasted. It's wasted energy. But think about it. There are families who can't get along. There's brothers that don't get along and sisters that don't get along. And look at the divorce rate. Husbands and wives don't get along. Sexes don't get along. One sex makes the other wrong. And then there's those that have different preferences for sexuality. And they make people that are so-called straight wrong. And the straight people make the, the gay people wrong. And all of it is is a laugh, right? God is laughing. It's a waste of energy to make anyone wrong. It's to relax. Let everyone make the choices they're making. And at the same time, do good and help others overcome this small-minded thinking. Relax. Notice where your small-minded thinking is, right? Notice what comes up in your body and in your mind that rejects others or gets angry about how others think, or their political persuasion, or their sexual preference, it's a waste. God is laughing. We are part of an amazing miracle, and our job is to do good. That's why you feel good. And somehow it's etched onto the fabric of time. Only the good I had done in my life was mentioned. In this cause and effect world, when we put out negative, we get back negative. It's almost like Vegas. What happens on earth stays on earth. The divine, the light, where I was, the infinite was not interested in evil or the negative or the darkness. It can't even exist there. I can only tell you that by how overwhelming the light was that how overwhelming the pure consciousness was. And it left me with this gift to question small-minded thinking. And I got to tell you, back in my body, I notice my small-minded thinking everywhere, and sometimes I succumb to it, especially in Brooklyn traffic. And then I laugh when I catch myself, and I remember it's here now. And in the now was the divine. If the divine took its attention off us, in any second, it would all end. And then it would start again, no doubt. Although I don't have the answer to that. But the divine is not judging us. We're judging us. The divine wants us to learn how to overcome our small-minded, acorn brain, little fucker thinking. To shut that voice down. And to imagine, what would God do here? What would Jesus do? What would Muhammad do? What would the Buddha do? It doesn't matter what your beliefs are. They're all correct. And the thread that runs through all of them is about doing good and loving your brothers and your sisters. Especially the ones under your roof, right? If we can't become if we're not willing to overcome the thoughts of, of that we angry at some family member who so-called uh, made us angry, we're never going to get over the bigger things. It's just letting it go. You'll be okay. If you'd like to challenge me, you can email me, steve at stevelentini.com, steve at stevelentini.com. If you'd like to be a guest in the podcast, you want to debate me, that's fine. We can do that. If you'd like to share your own experience of death, of transitioning from this life into the next life, because there is no death. There is no croaking. <laughs> If you'd like to share your lessons, if you'd like to share what you learned from a tragedy and, 
and you've come to know that it was divine because of what it taught you and how it moved you. Everything here is divine, especially the most uncomfortable stuff and the most uncomfortable people. Steve at stevelentini.com. Email me. Have a good week.